Now, for those of you who like bracket pods, bracket pods are common. Bracket pods are <coughs> boring. Um, no. Well, some are not. Look at that. It's got a hole through it. They call them the keyhole bracket pods. Okay. And this one right here, that, I know that doesn't look like bracket pod, but it is. Um, geologists sometimes refer to these things as leaves in gravy boats. So one shell is scoop shaped, and the other shell is, is this odd shape that kind of looks like a, um, a fall leaf with, with, with lots of pieces missing. Um, even professional bracket pod workers still puzzle over what these things are. And there's a lot of ideas out there, but even the professionals will admit that, you know, we don't really know what the deal is with that. So we know they're bracket pods, but these are some of the oddest, actually, no, these are the oddest bracket pods out there. I, I just love those things. Um, sometimes microfossils can really get uh, people scratching their head. If you take a look at the lower Cayman of South Australia or in other places in the world, you dissolve some limestone and pick through the residue, you might see little plates like this. This is called microdiction. I've been to this locality and found trilobites in Archaeosci Athens, and there's also some of this here, too. But what is it? Well, we didn't have a clue until we found a complete specimen. Those are plates that occur in pairs on a long worm-like organism with long legs like this. We didn't have a clue that's what that would be about. So that's one of, the, one of the wonderful things about the fossil record. You find pieces parts, and you ponder them, and you puzzle over them, and uh, you debate them, and then someone comes along and finds a complete one, and you're all, you're all wrong. Okay, you didn't know it was going to look like that. No, we didn't. It's pretty cool. Here's another Cambrian oddball. I mean, well, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Call me silly, but wow. Here, oh. Okay, I'm sure some of you have heard about this. The most famous oddball ever found in the fossil record. So bizarre that it's given the scientific name hallucinogenia, because you think you're hallucinating when you see it. A blobby shaped head, an elongated body, a, a, a hollow trunk like tail, a row of seven appendages on the, on the back, little snapper structures, and seven pairs of stiff walking stilts. What? Is God playing a joke on us or something, throwing that in there? Just what, what, What's going on? Besides, it lived in a shale environment, which was originally mud. How can you get around in mud if you've got seven pairs of stiff walking stilts? Um, this has been the most famous, bizarre creature ever. However, um, some of you may have heard that, oh, we got this wrong. It turns out the real creature, uh, we should look at it upside down and backward. Okay. But does that make it any less bizarre? <laughs> okay. It turns out there's two rows of these structures on the back. So these are actually the legs, and these are spikes that protect it. I mean, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Uh, we found some decent fossils of this in China that indicate, oh, we got it upside down and backward. It's kind of a shame. I'm kind of disappointed. Not that, not that I'm against getting the right interpretation, but I kind of wish this was what it actually was like. It's not just so cool. Hallucinogenia. Um, the famous Chenjiang deposit of China is, uh, has some of the best preservation in the world. Um, look at these fine little details of these, uh, of these gills and other fine structures on the limbs of this arthropod. Beautiful preservation, plus an odd arthropod. If you know arthropods, I challenge you to try to figure out what, what that thing is. Now, I know this looks like a trilobite with an extra large tail, and there are some trilobites with extra large tails. They're called the scutellids. But this is not a trilobite. Besides, look at how much larger the tail is. I mean, does, doesn't that almost look like you know it's a trilobite with with, with its pants pulled up around its chest? <laughs> okay, well, okay, it's it's not a it, it's not a trilobite here. I mean, I mean, yes, it does look like the pants are pulled up all the way to a chest, but it's not. It's not even a trilobite. Okay, okay, this thing is not calcified, and it's simply a bizarre organism. I mean, th this is one of the oddest trilobite-like things I've ever seen in the fossil record. So despite what it looks like, it ain't a trilobite. I mean, some trilobites are pretty bizarre, but it ain't a trilobite. Now, I specialize in arthropods, and sometimes I see things that just, just, just blow my mind. Um, this thing is so bizarre that they don't even want to call it an arthropod. They want to put it in a different phylum. This is one of the more famous oddball creatures coming out of the Xinjiang Lagerstätte in China. Huh. Do I need to say anything? Wow. Bizarre. Weird. Obviously it looks like a trilobite, but it's not a trilobite. There is no trilobite that even got close to this elongation. Um, besides, it, you know, it, it is clearly not a trilobite, but it's clearly trilobite-like. It's probably a stem, uh, uh, um, some sort of uh, um, stem group uh, creature, but wow. Sometimes they don't look like trilobites, but they are. This was described way back in the 1870s, and trilobite people through the years have said, you know, I know they called it a trilobite originally, but I don't really know what to make of this. 
And when the, uh, the famous trilobite treatise came out in 1959, they said, ah, we're getting rid of this. This is clearly not a trilobite. Um, they didn't say what they thought it was. They said, wow, this is just not a trilobite. It turns out it is. Okay? Sometimes, even if it doesn't look like it, those previous ones didn't look like trilobites. They weren't. This one doesn't look like a trilobite. It is. Uh, the fossil record's fine that way. Here's one that was described just a couple years ago. This has got extensions over the top of its eyes. So it's in the ocean, it's on the seafloor, the sun is shining from above, and those little extensions act as eye shades. So this photograph here was taken with a light shining on top, and notice how all the lenses are in the shade. A trilobite with eye shades. Whoa, that is so cool. Um, some of the more bizarre things that have been pulled out of the Cambrian, and now we even know these things from the Devonian, are the anomalous keratids. Uh, here's the classic anomalous keratid. Uh, this one was described just a couple months ago with a bivalve uh, shell type structure over its head. And uh, even more recently, uh, someone found one in the Devonian of, uh, of Germany. Some of the most bizarre creatures I've ever seen. They're entirely extinct. Not to be totally biased toward arthropods, let's look at the echinoderms, some of the starfish relatives. Okay, if you look at the oceans today, there are five groups of echinoderms. The starfish, uh, the brittle stars, the crinoids, um, the, uh, the sea urchins and the sand dollars, and um, the sea cucumbers. So there's five groups of echinoderms in today's oceans. If you look at the Cambrian, there aren't five groups of echinoderms. There's 20. And if you look at all those other 15, I mean, this one's bizarre, and that one's even more bizarre, and this one's even more bizarre, and wow, that one's even more bizarre. Uh, this is my favorite of the weirdo extinct echinoderms. It looks like a football with spiraling plates going up it. They call these things helical placoids. Uh, these things are very rare on Earth. They're the only places you can find them are essentially are in Nevada and California. Bizarre organism. Let's get to something a little bit more traditional, crinoids. Some of you may know your crinoids. A crinoid is a starfish on a stick. The stick it consists of stacked poker chips. Uh, the stem of the, of the crinoid, the stick, is usually rounded. Not always, but usually rounded. But there's a very bizarre one coming out of Indiana that has individual pieces of the stem elongated, elliptical. And if you stack them up, the stem is helical like that. Wow, that is so cool. And crinoids got even weirder than this. Uh, this is from a crinoid book that was put out a couple years ago. Uh, the upper part of the stem is, uh, is not really symmetrical. It's, uh, it, it's elongated like this. So the head of the crinoid, you know, where the guts are and, and, and so forth, are hidden under here. So it would you know, wrap up. Wow. And other crinoids are even more bizarre than this. Take a look at how dinky the crinoid head is there compared to how large the stem is there. And take a look at this uh, very spino structure on the top of this. Uh, here's another uh, odd a, um, crinoid. Usually crinoids are on the seafloor like this. And the, the head of the crinoid is up here. This one is lying prone on the seafloor and it flips its head up or down or up like this or down. For crinoids, okay, if you don't hear crinoids, take my word for it. That is majorly bizarre. What do you think about that? What is that? <laughs> Which is the head end, even? No. Maybe. No. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I have nothing to say about this. No one has anything to say about this. <laughs> this. I mean, I mean, I specialize in the Cambrian, and the Cambrian is full of famous oddballs. But you know, we have them elsewhere too. I, what is it? Well, I think it's safe to say it's an animal. <laughs> but I think that's as, that's as far as I'm going to go. Something a little bit more traditional, some sharks. Do you know your fossil sharks? There's a group that had a famous structure uh, like this on, on, on its head, um, and there's a group that had this odd uh, spike-like structure. Uh, it's thought that the females uh, did not have little teeth structures, and the males did have little teeth structures. And, brace yourself, 